Getting Jenny involved in this conversation is going to be very, very handy for me when I won't have to answer, ask any more questions. Jenny, the mic's yours. You just let the ball roll and I'll interrupt if I need to. Um, Gina and I met because um, in 19, uh, I was headhunted to be women's advisor to the Department of Recreation and Sport. And in those days, we had a whole Women in Sport Week. And if you were, any of you were here, we would take over the entire Victoria race course and have girls out there doing activity. We had posters, we had things. And we really believed, and I personally believe that women should get everything that they deserve with sport. And it, part of my job, all of a sudden this person came up and she hadn't had any help from the blokes, believe me. Um, she'd gone to talk to the sample and everything else like that and, and got nowhere. And, got, and, and she turned up in my office and she said, I really want to play footy. Now, that resonated with me too. <laughs> At the time I was playing Australian lacrosse. And, but Gina said, so we sat down and we talked about it and she was really keen to do this and was really prepared to keep following it through on the years uh, afterwards. So it was my pleasure to be a real assistant and actually do my job and actually be involved with Gina. And that's why we named it after Gina. We worked out what was going to be, where they were going to play, all of that. And um, what a great job it's gone from there. And by the way, can I just add one thing? When you said it's grown incredibly in 30 years, Thank goodness in the last four or five it has grown like it should have grown. You know, like it took a long time to get to there. Gina, just before uh, I get you to hand the microphone over to Laura, you, you see players that come through your league now and then we see them live on free-to-air TV playing for the Adelaide Crows or for Collingwood or for Carlton. How do you feel? You've started this league where they've progressed through, got their, got their first start and gone on to play at the highest level. Oh, incredibly proud and excited. And um, it, it was great to be involved in the start. Um, and we could have never pushed it to where it is now. So I'm very thankful for everybody that's made the difference in the last 30 years that we just couldn't get it there. One of the quick chat to Laura Gioretto as well. Laura, you're the inaugural Dutchkey medalist. We had a conversation, I think it might have been via email three or four years ago. Your memory is inc incredible because you can tell me so much about the night, including that the turkey was a bit dry, I think. It was, it was. <laughs> what were your recollections of, of that night? Um, well, not very much about the count, actually. It was more about the people in the room and there was a lot of drinking and yahooing and storytelling. And in fact, Deb's here tonight. There's been more stories, so that's excellent. But they're, they're my main memories. And just reflecting on the season that we had, it was so much fun. I've got a vague recollection that you didn't really know if you'd won because there were so many people ruffling your hair and screaming in your ear at the time. You couldn't hear the vote counts going on. I was surrounded by my teammates. They had jumped on me as if it was a scrum on the field. So I had no idea. <laughs> you played uh, basketball as well as cricket. Uh, what was it like in that era trying to mix all of those sports? It was quite difficult. I was a representative basketballer, so I played for South Australia and for Australia. Um, and it came a time that I had to choose. I actually gave up basketball to play footy for a few years, and, and that was great. I, I think of myself as the prototype for Erin Phillips. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, it's a quick basketball to become a footballer. And you've done something she's never won. You won the Dutchkey medal. What, what, what does it mean to you when you see uh, Chloe Shears won this medal twice? And we're talking about, you, you played some cricket, we talked about Emma Sampson and Lauren Epsory having won this medal twice. I mean, these are elite athletes uh, here from South Australia. What does it mean to you to be the first one of all of those? It's incredible. I can't, re uh, you know, I really can't believe it. Um, but even back then, the, the girls that played footy were elite athletes. We came together from a whole range of other sports and it was merely the opportunity that we had to run around on the field that people grabbed it with both hands and, and took it on. So that, you know, there were players not just from cricket and basketball, but soccer and, and lacrosse and volleyball and netball. You wouldn't have thought the netballers would be out there, but they were. <laughs> Laura, I think you played in the first ever state game, but I'm going to ask Jenny about it a bit because I think she was a key instigator in putting that together. Were you part of that game? Absolutely. Remember any of it? Remember I remember else? winning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Jenny to tell us a little bit more about it. Can you recall the origins of that initial state game? Um, yeah, can I, uh, what happened was when Jenna asked me, we said, well, how do we get women to know that this is actually going to be going next year? So we decided to have a state team 
and we worked it out by choosing elite athletes, but also having a round robin beforehand, for which four groups of players played. And we looked at people and went, yep, them, yep, them, and joined in. And we had this amazing game on Adelaide Oval. Mark Micken and Daryl Hart came and trained us all. Uh, we got the state uniforms and we were allowed to wear them. And the Victorians turned up on the bus. They thought they were going to absolutely dominate us. Uh, Pat Micken was our first ruck. And we went out there and they scored nine points for the whole game and we scored 124. So, so we, were, we were pretty pleased with that. And, um, at the time, I was playing Australian lacrosse, but Pat Mickett and I said, if we'd have been, Laura's another one, we figured if we'd have been boys, we'd have been worth a lot of money. And uh, the other thing was, for me, out of all my trophies and everything, I actually got best on ground that day on the 9th of the 9th of 1990, and my number was nine, so that's probably my favorite trophy that I have at home out of everything else. And we made great friends and picked a lot of good people. And my best story of the day, though, very quickly, was one girl came out and I said, everyone, you have to have mouth guards. Because, you know, like a lot played sport that didn't have one. And at half time, she came on, she goes, my mouth guard's really hurting. And I said, why? Where'd you get it? Did you get it fitted? Is it dentist and that? She goes, no, it's my brother's. <laughs> so <laughs> with that, I worked out, and Sue Delina also, whose brother Carl played for um, St Kilda, I said, oh, Sue, you're in the forward pocket thinking she might, she went, where's the forward pocket? So again, um, it was so much fun and I just thank heavens that I got to meet some of these wonderful women early. And can I just say, she is outstanding. If she was playing now, I, I didn't see real play much. So sorry, no, but when I'm talking about people who play, yeah. Laura is also, you played Australian rugby too, didn't you, Laura? Oh, yeah, wow. I thought so. So yeah, she's a really good athlete. Just uh, one of those high achievers that, yeah. But, uh, you're not finished up just yet. Like, one more for you, because you're actually not the only Australian lacrosse player in the room, would you believe? I can see Bonnie Wells over there. Oh, <laughs> oh hold on. Yeah, and she'll try and, she'll try and steal my number. <laughs> Bond, number nine. Bonnie, Bonnie has had a crack uh, with Morganville Park and, of course, uh, Glenelg in Sandful W. Do you reflect back on your day? You know, there was just no such thing as a pathway for women. I mean, you look at that now and that's changed so much. But do you ever think, oh, I wonder if things were a bit different, I might have gone on and played AFLW instead of lacrosse? At the time, there was no absolutely no pathway. And, in fact, I was playing elite soccer and there was no World Cup in women's soccer, which is why I went to lacrosse. And now to look at these young women having these opportunities, going away, having a really good time together. And please, if there's one thing I can say that I had in sport that I think you've got to keep in it, was we had fun. We were trying to be the best. We did every bit of hard work you possibly could, but we were nice to each other. We worked really hard and the game was always fun. And I worry a little bit about that we've lost that whole thing that if you want to train hard, make it better and more interesting and fun than anything else. And so when you ask me about a pathway, oh, oh, you know, I grew up watching my three brothers, you know, my dad's got a grandstand at Adelaide Oval and all the most I can do is ever wave at it. And you know that, I look at it and go, if you had the opportunity, 24, 24! Women don't get great till they're 28 to 30. So 24, all of you sitting in here, do not give up if someone tells you you can't. Get there and do it. Uh, my... <laughs> Solid policy of life to live by, Jessica Waterhouse has never argued with Jenny Williams. She is right. You're, you're going to be very young for a number of years to come. Rel Smith, uh, your career is quite amazing and we're seeing you having reached uh, the pinnacle of football. You're working with AFLW clubs, you've been working with men's teams as well. I, I mean, things are starting to open up, but you have put in blood, sweat and tears into the Sawful slash Adelaide Footy League women over the last 20 years. Does it, is it a sense of relief for you that suddenly there's uh, some cracks in that glass ceiling? Um, it's a really hard act to follow these Three, uh, but you can do it. Three gals. Um, but I think um, I often have this conversation with people about I have a reputation for being a bit of a hard, uh, hard woman. Um, but there were a lot of battles had back then, like these guys started it. And um, I don't know if Cheryl Cates is here, or I don't know uh, whether she's here, but she had some fantastic battles. And I, I just kind of picked up the reins when 
when she uh, needed a break and um, that's eventually what happens when you're having all these battles but it was I think it was an instrumental moment um, when Kerners and I and Jono sat down and we actually uh, said that this is going to get too big and uh, volunteers couldn't run it anymore and, and we handed it over to the Adelaide Footy League and I think that's why it's ended up where it was where it is now. We've seen Sample W as well. There'll be a, a development slash reserves competition in Sample next year, which is tremendously exciting. When you see young girls who you've worked with as juniors, young women go on to play AFLW, how does that make you feel? Yeah, look, I've learned a lot along the way. You know, it wasn't always great. Um, I've, by my own admissions as a coach, when I started, I was terrible. I wanted everyone to play like I played and I didn't understand diversity and what you need to make a good list, but I've learned a lot over the seven years um, about how to be uh, better. And that, well, I think Jenny hit the nail on the head when you say you have to make it fun, but it also has to be fun for yourself and um, to be able to uh, make people really want to be in a good environment. Having seen 30 years, well, most of the 30 years of uh, SA women's football, what, what do you say now? You see this wonderful looking room tonight, you see the way the competition has developed. What does what do you feel about the Adelaide Footy League women and the competition now? Oh, you just walk out. I watched the Div 1, the Div 2, um, I watched the Div 5 and Div 4 grand finals this year and you just it just makes you swell with pride to go, you know, at the time where no one cared, no one thought that it would actually happen at AFLW. Um, that we, you know, everyone in this room, there's so many places in this room that you go, they dug in, they continue to do what they loved and, and now the AFLW. I think South Australia gets a bit of a bum rap in there because they talk about all the pioneers in Victoria. And I go, right now, Sample W and the Adelaide Footy League is the premium women's competition in Australia. We're getting, you know, um, people from interstate wanting to come and play in our leagues. And uh, they keep banging on about the Victorians, but I think South Australian is probably we're leading the way. How, how many, Gina? How many teams did you actually start with in that first year? There were six. 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 And has it, it's bounced around a bit. I think there's been periods where maybe there's been a couple less than that before it's ballooned up. I reckon the second year we only had five with a bye. It was organised from those round robins that um, Jenny was talking about. Everyone gave me their name and number, and I just put them into zones according to where they lived in, in Adelaide. It's probably how they did it in the early days with the <laughs> Sample football as well. Yeah, you live at North Adelaide, you're going to play for the Roosters. Um, I was just going to ask anyone in the room, um, if you ever want to, we've got the first bit of uh, the state match is actually on YouTube, and I was wondering if there's any other footage that anyone else has got of the early league that we can actually make sure is on there. For, yeah, It's one of those things that I sort of go, it's a missed opportunity if we don't have that. So if you can do a bit of a search around and ask, is there any old footage from the early years? Because it becomes one of the things that is just fantastic to keep. So I think Jenny Williams just become a historian. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, normally the way it rolls. Could you please think our four legends of South Australian women's football? Jenny Williams.